Hello team, it's time for the Daily Detangler. And today it's about revealing the invisible. This is uh, Antoni Philip von Leeuwenhoek. He, he was actually a Dutch business guy and he was a scientist. He was self-taught, self-taught. And he's now known as the father of microbiology. In 1674, he looked at a drop of lake water through a homemade microscope and discovered an invisible world that no one knew existed. His microscopes actually were zooming in to 250 to 500 times the, the human eye. And this was in 1674. He kept his, his um, microscopes and how he built them a secret, and nobody knew how he observed. He was the first to discover bacteria, sperm cells, blood cells, mold. Uh, he documented insects like bees and lice and, and figured out what they looked like. And that was just 350 years ago. Think of the massive impact he had. But the thing about it that I find really intriguing is he was really misunderstood and he didn't fit the mold. His view was so uh, confrontational because he was self-taught and not classically trained. Um, and, but yet his work was so precise and high end and high quality that the Royal Society of Science had to recognize him. He made painstaking observations. He constructed rational and repeatable experimental procedures. His experiments were actually ingenious and yet he was attacked by the people um, that looked at him and they couldn't believe what he was putting out. And he was scorned because he was unschooled. And the thing that made it tougher was he did a lot of his work in secret, which just opened him up for a lot more scrutiny and negativity. He was the first to think of looking, and he was definitely the first to see this hidden world that nobody knew existed. And that's what I wanna talk about is this revealing the invisible. Thinking about that story, there's a lot of parallels to what we're working on and the energy we're putting into observe, observe and document and how we're linking to current situations and how we're documenting situations and thinking through um, how we're gonna role play and, and, and message and learning by doing and documenting as we're going. And the, the focus that we have on revealing what we see, um, that's, that's only part of the challenge. There's, there's also the ability to share what we're seeing with others. And that's critical too. So let's go into the lab. In our lab, we have our, our scientific approaches and we have our scientists. And just in this picture in and of itself, the, the science and the scientists coming together, this is radically different um, in just how our lab is set up. And I like to think about this because this, the nature of how this is working uh, can create a massive um, new uh, set of observations and, a, and a, a whole new innovation. And obviously the challenge is how do we share that and how do we document it? And um, this is one of the things that each of these bubbles on the left um, is, a, is a field in and of itself and people get certified and get, and get six year degrees and PhDs in each one of these things on the left. That, and this is what um, salespeople have to deal with. They have to deal with the, all these domains. So we're, we're set up to create this shared understanding by doing. And this shared understanding by doing involves the same types of things that von Leeuwenhoek deal, dealt with. For example, Leeuwenhoek leaned into the power of observation. And these are his actual drawings. Um, the, bo the bottom left one is a, a zoom in with his microscope of uh, an oak tree and what he saw there. Um, you can see the different shells, the different claws of um, 
you know, um, animals, um, fleas in the top right and, and sperm and what he was able to see through his microscope. And that power of observing and documenting those uh, became irrefutable. Um, and then when he was able to show others, um, they were able to talk about it and they were able to move forward. But even in the face of, of um, all that documentation, he was still scrutinized. And he, he, his approaches were scrutinized too. He, the way that he created these um, you know, renderings and these drawings and, and the, the work he did to convert um, his, his actual observations into C slides, those, those two things, what he created brand new and what he converted uh, from, from existing understanding, that created new understanding. He moved the field forward by creating uh, a new field. He, he moved science forward by exploring these uh, microorganisms. And he didn't even have a word for microorganism. That word didn't even exist. It had to be created. So he created this whole new language, this whole new um, um, understanding, and he converted the scientific approach to create something new and and convert that idea into reality and that created new understanding and he had curiosity he inqu inquiry and he had time and and he also had tools he created new tools um and and the tools were interesting because this microscope here uh, people actually came from miles around and, and he was world famous. Um, Peter the Great even visited him to try to understand what this thing was. And he didn't have a word for it. Um, it was handheld and the tool was actually his passion. Um, he really wanted to see things and he was just so curious that he built this, what we would call you know, um, a, a microscope or a magnifying glass. And he built that and that this, the lenses that he used was, was really his passion. And then he, he applied that tool to, to look at things and then he, he just started documenting it. So the tools that he used actually revealed and created this um, understanding. And um, he did that through the power of exploration. He just explored it and saw, and saw where it went by using the tools. And because he had the tools and because he um, used the tools, he was able to zoom in. He was able to zoom in on specific situations, make specific observations and detail specific phenomenon. And phenomenon here is just, you know, what is he seeing? And it requires two things, you know, something to be seen, but also the observer to document it. If you don't uh, observe and document, it's not a phenomenon that you have to have both. And that um, ability to document and draw those pictures uh, helped bring the, uh, the things to life. And again, these were, these were previously unseen. Um, you know, many of these uh, breakthroughs were previously unseen. So what are the data that, that we collect? And what are we collecting to, to actually document um, and create shared understanding? And I was reflecting on that and, um, you know, we create a lot of stuff. Uh, the question is, um, how is that helping Catalyst? And then, you know, from that perspective, how is, it, how is it helping him share what we're seeing and share what we're observing? And, and how are we creating shared understanding with him? And that really becomes the, the focal point of the Von Leeuwenhoek story was his, his willingness to share what he was seeing but his unwillingness to share his instruments and his tools. He kept those secret. He wouldn't tell anybody about how he created these microscopes. And um, it actually uh, became a, a contentious uh, sore spot because um, there was such an appetite to understand how he was seeing these things that um, he kept it a mystery. It was, it was kind of interesting. And the, the power of sharing what he saw uh, made him world famous, but there was this human appetite to know how it happened and it created some negativity. And isn't that, isn't that like us? There's going to be a, a lot of um, folks that, that want to understand exactly how we did it, but the, 
the lasting impact is in what we see and what we observe and document. And uh, von Leeuwenhoek ignored the people who wanted to see his microscopes, instead cranking out, you know, 200 letters of documentation to the Royal Society. So what did he document and what did he share? You know, did he share responses? Did he share frameworks and tools and principles and discussions that he had? Or did he share what he was observing and what he was learning and what he was, um, you know, seeing through his microscope? And that's like, that's like us, right? What are we documenting? Our understanding or our, our action? And, you know, from my own perspective, I'm trying to move into the, uh, spend more time on the court and to develop ways in which to document with the purpose of sharing and creating understanding that allows me to, you know, um, that, that in, in my lens, in my, and what is my lens? It's my role and my role um, and, and how I document and write up things and share it with um, Catalyst becomes a, a, an input into him. And uh, then, you know, what he puts together becomes an observation uh, that others can ben benefit from. And of course, all day long, I get a lot of questions outside of our team around how exactly does this work and how do we do this? And those are the same types of things, um, you know, uh, that Leeuwenhoek struggled with was, you know, how do we make this microscope? How do you make this glass? How do you make this lens? And all, all that stuff um, is for individual benefit, but it isn't necessarily to the benefit of the science. And so our lab has been set up to create observations and turn these observations into shared understanding and convert uh, unknown into known and invisible into visible. So how does that um, happen? And, and what's my role in that? You know, um, how do I participate in the science lab? And how do I lean into the lab we're creating? And then what's the impact of those people observing? It's interesting, um, the left side business suit view of let's observe what's happening in the growth enablement lab and let's document it and scrutinize it and you know assess it and label it versus the gorilla in the mist view on the right where you know Jane Goodall is hanging out in the environment and observing from the actual environment. Um, and getting a little bit dirty. And these are the observers we wanna attract, those people on the right. These are the early adopters that wanna get into the environment. These are the ones that are uh, empathetic to the sales uh, role and empathetic to the challenges of communicating value. And those are the observers that we wanna pay attention to, not the observers on the left who wanna scrutinize everything and analyze it. And this is the the difference between analysis and, and synthesis, right? So who, who, who's observing and how are we creating shared understanding with the right observers? And this goes back to the, this visual that um, around the growth enablements, you know, value and how we work. What is our science, our scientific method, our models and our frameworks that allow us to see? And then what are we collecting? The way we're set up, uh, the way we're organized, provides unique perspective um, from specific roles to bring the data together. We do that by collecting observations and documenting what we're seeing. And that data becomes the data that our head scientists and catalysts can use to uh, formulate the right type of solutions and experiences that allow us to drive uh, change in the commercial system. And then a way we're set up and how we um, lean into the experiences we're creating, the environment um, to drive the change uh, and the, the engagement that we have on our team provides um, you know, ex experiences that drive new understanding and new breakthroughs. And uh, that's driven by our approach where we lean into our principles and we follow the, and trust the process. The um, observers in the field that are observing us, you know, that are getting their hands dirty, uh, appreciate this view. And the question that I have myself is, you know, how am I leaning into that? And what am I doing to ground the reality that exists and, um, you know, create the, 
the, the awareness and create the shared understanding of what I'm seeing. And uh, this is this is the uh, the role of the scientist, right? And do I view myself as a scientist in the commercial system? Do I do I lean into the the science that we have and well documented our scientific uh, models site? And then am I disciplined about the data that I collect? And, and am I able to retrieve it and build off of it and connect the dots? Um, what's my approach to you know managing that information and data? And then am I tuned into the experiences we're creating and the experiences of, of Catalyst as he's navigating the complexity of, of a changing changing ecosystem? And how do I how do I help see and, and document those those changes by getting on the court? And just like Von Leeuwenhoek said, um, whenever I found something remarkable, I, I have thought it in my duty, my duty to put down my discovery on paper so that all ingenious people, <laughs> so that all ingenious people be informed thereof, <laughs> right? There's a lot of smart people out there uh, in the commercial system that need to be informed and the world around them uh, doesn't necessarily set up the environment to receive what we're, what we're putting out, but our approach can help them uh, you know, ground to the new reality, which means to me, it's about getting it right, not being right, having real examples to pull from and sharing how we uh, overcome those and sharing stories that show the transformational impact and quantifying that impact and leaning into that post-COVID world of digital transformation. And that's, that's about getting it right, not being right. So that's been today's Daily Detangler. I encourage you to reach out and, and uh, continue to share observations with, with each other. There's a lot going on around that. So I appreciate the time. And uh, I hope you enjoyed today's Detangler. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care.